Track and field dominates in the championships. Men's basketball wins their first playoff game. All this and more coming up on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome into the Penguin Rundown. I'm Abigail Cloutier here with Abbas Braswell. Abbas, uh, a lot of sports did really well uh, this past week. Baseball is starting off and track and field dominated their championships. They did, they did pretty well. Yeah, they're doing really well on the running and the throwing and they're, everybody's dominating in the whole thing. Um, baseball starting off really well, better than we have in recent years and we're, we're very excited for them this season. Yeah, definitely, but I think you're going to get us started off with a sport that's also doing really well, men's basketball. Yes, I will. The men's basketball team split their final two games of the regular season on the road. On Thursday, the team traveled to Green Bay, where despite five players scoring in double digits, they lost 102-92. to Sophomore Darius Quisenberry led the Gwens with 29 points and five assists. The Penguins bounced back on Saturday night when they beat Milwaukee 73-69. to Senior Devin Morgan had a go-ahead three with 35 seconds left in the game. Quisenberry was the leading scorer once again with 24 points. The men ended up ended the regular season with an overall record of 17 and 14 and a Horizon League record of 10 and 8. Those 10 league wins tied a school record for the most Horizon League wins. The Gwens finished fifth in the league and on Tuesday, and on Tuesday night, hosted their first playoff game since 2013. Number eight, Milwaukee came to town for the second meeting within 72 hours. The mere, the, 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 the mere battled, battled back in the second half of the game and won their first playoff game in three years, 63-57. to 57. Junior Nas Bohannon dropped 20 points and was leading scorer for the whole game. Bohannon spoke on the road ahead following Tuesday night's game. Um, at this point, it's just about surviving and advancing. So we just got to come together as a team, stay together, and on the road, our defense has to travel. We gave up 57 points today, so we got to go out there with the same mentality to go and get stops versus UIC. The Penguins play tonight against UIC Flames for the Horizon League quarterfinals. Tune in to ESPN Plus or 570 WKBN for tip-off at 8 p.m. The league awards came out on Monday, and three Penguins came away with honors. Darius Quisenberry was named to the All Horizon League first team. Devin Morgan was named the Horizon League sixth player of the year. And junior Garrett Covington was named to the Horizon League All Defensive Team for the second straight season. The women's basketball team traveled up to Wisconsin this past weekend. They ended their regular season with games against Milwaukee on Thursday and Green Bay on Saturday. Thursday night's game against Milwaukee was a close battle from start to finish. The Penguins led by four entering the final quarter, but were held scoring six points in the fourth, dropping the contest 59 to 54. Junior guard Chelsea Olsen shined in her home state, scoring 17 points while grabbing six rebounds and five steals. On Saturday, the Penguins battled the second best team in the Horizon League, the Green Bay Phoenix. The Penguins struggled in this contest and dropped the final game of the regular season by a 20 point margin of 71 to 51. McKenna Peters was the leader for the Penguins. She put up 15 points, with all of those points coming from beyond the three-point arc. The Penguins ended the regular season with a record of 13-16 and 6-12 and and in Horizon League play. The record lands them a seven seed in the Horizon League tournament. The Penguins took on the Cleveland State Vikings in the first round of tourney play Tuesday night at the Wolfstein Center in Cleveland. Unfortunately, the women dropped this game 84-48, ending their tournament run and their season. Congratulations to the men's track and field squad who claimed their fifth straight league championship this weekend. The women also claimed their fourth consecutive Horizon League championship title. The men took first in nine of the 17 events of the day, finishing with a 214 total. This included junior Sean Peterson who finished first in the 800 meter and in the one mile. This was the third victory in the 800 meter in his championship career. Dakari Carter was named freshman of the year for his doubles win, for his double wins in the 60 meter and 80 meter dash. Senior Colin Harden took first in the 60 meter hurdles. Freshman Jakari Lemmicks dominated in triple jump. 
which was the first time a Penguin won the event in the league. In shot put, dynamic duo Brandon Orlando and Dom Westbay took first and second men's and women's coach Brian Gorby was named coach of the year for the fourth straight year. The sprinters on the women's side were able to lift the Gwens from a third place projected finish all the way to victory. 67 of the final 183 points came from the sprinting stars. The Gwens had the top four spots in both the 200 meter and the 60 meter, led by senior Jalea Elliott. The athlete took first in the 60 meter dash, her third straight victory in the event. She also took first in the 200 meter dash, shattering her own school record. She was named Alfreda Golf Indoor Track and Field Female Athlete of the Year. Counting the women, continuing the women's success for the women's sophomore, Olivia Jones conquered the pentathlon on four of uh, four for the second straight year. Freshman Olivia Bentley also took first in shot put. Her victory marked the 10th year in a row the event has been claimed by a YSU athlete. She was named Field Freshman of the Year, as well as Janiah Bowers, who claimed Freshman of the Year on the track. With his thoughts on the Gwen's performance, we'll send it over to special guest Sean Peterson and rundown reporter Kelsey Nor Norris, Norris at the roundtable. Welcome into the roundtable. I'm Kelsey Norris uh, with a very special guest, Sean Peterson of the track and field team. Sean, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so um, first question, just kind of get started. Um, what did you accomplish over the weekend? So as a team, YSU won our, I think, fifth straight Horizon League championship for as a men's program. Individually, I won the mile and 800. Yeah, awesome. So um, the, you are the second runner correct me if I'm wrong, but second runner in league history to win this event three times mm -hmm. in a row. So um, how did you feel hearing that? Um, that's just awesome. You know, there's, being that there's only been one other person, it's just it's really uh, validating that I'm able to be in kind of like rare air there. So, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, so since you're only a junior, do you mm -hmm. think next year you'll be going for a number four? Oh, absolutely. If uh, let, we'll see if I end up redshirting or anything, what the coach's plans are, but as of now, that's definitely a goal. Yeah, wonderful. And um, how has uh, Coach Brian Gorby, he coaches the men and the women, mm -hmm. um, how has he kind of been preparing the team all season for championships? Yeah, well, with these, when you see with uh, Coach Gorby and the rest of the coaching staff, you see that we have uh, good athletes just all across the track team in field and the jumps, throws, pole vault. So, like, the whole entire team is ready. You know, we have very spread out success. It's not one facet of the team that's, uh, you know, winning a lot. It's kind of everyone, so. Yeah, and how would you describe the culture of the team? Uh, it's super fun to be around. You know, going to practice is the highlight of my day every day, even when I know it's going to be a hard workout and I'm, not, and I'm not looking forward to it. It's still a thing that I get to see all my friends, and it's just a really good atmosphere. Yeah, and just kind of as a student athlete, um, how do you balance practice and school? Um, it's something you just continue to learn. You know, freshman year obviously were my not brightest days as an athlete, but it's just something you continue to. We also have a very helpful staff and very helpful professors that, you know, when I'm gone for traveling, I'm still able to stay up on top of everything. Yeah. And once again, since you're a junior, um, you'll be back next year. What are your ex expectations for um, personal goals and as a team next year? Um, well, I think we're set up pretty nice to come in as favorites to win the conference again as a team, so that would be awesome. Um, I have some goals in mind. You know, I, I know I'm still not on the record board yet, so that's something I'd love to get on. And uh, just, you know, there's some possible things beyond Horizon League that I'd like to accomplish. Yeah. Um, and how do you get into the zone before a meet? Hmm pump up music, uh, just talking to my coach, just running through some pre-race strategy and just little things like that. Yeah. And um, just kind of as like looking back on the season since unfortunately it is over, we all love watching it, mm -hmm. but um, what are one of the your favorite moments from the season? Um, I'd say getting the opportunity to go out to uh, Iowa State with Nikki and Coach Roop. You know, they saw we had good races, so then they Coach Gorby wanted to make a concerted effort to get us out there and, you know, get us in an atmosphere we're not comfortable with, you know, and just get some big race experience. So even though it wasn't a very successful race, it was nice getting out there. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, this is Sean Peterson once again with the track and field team. Abigail and Abbas, back to you. Women's golf took on the Kiowa Island Classic earlier this week. 
The team finished 32nd out of 53 teams at the Classic overall. Still, the women finished with a three-round total of 925. It is tied for the fifth-lowest 54-hole score in program history. Both freshmen on the team did well in the event. Christina Lewis had a three-round total of 227, and Danae Regola had a strong final round of 73, just once over par. Regola had a three-round total of 230. College of Charleston won the tournament title with a final three-round score of 860. The women have a short break before they next compete in the Benbow Invitational at Jacksonville Beach Golf Club in Jacksonville, Florida, earlier, early this upcoming week. The women's bowling team had a runner-up finish at the Big Red Invitational in Lincoln, Nebraska. On the first day, the Penguins beat two top five opponents in order to go 5-0. The team set records for highest Baker match and highest Baker game that totaled 1,124 pins. Nikki Mendez did not let the leap year throw, off her, throw her off from bowling a 289, just two strikes away from a perfect game. Mendez even broke the school record for the highest five-game series with 1,121 pins and helped the wins break team record for highest match total, 1,138 pins, and highest round total, 5,243 pins. On the last day, the ladies were able to push third-ranked Nebraska to seven games in the championship match to finish as the runner-up. The women's bowling team will bowl in their final regular season tournament this weekend on March 6th through 8th in Smyrna, Tennessee to compete in the Columbia 300 Music City Classic. The Youngstown State women's tennis team returned to action on Saturday at the Avalon Athletic Club of Boardman as they picked up a 4-0 win over Niagara. The Gwens picked up a doubles point as Tamara Tufel and Elvira Esteo earned a 7-5 win while Iman Hasim and Lucia Zagar won by a 6-3 score. In singles play, Tufel, Zagar, Andrea Paytu, and Claudia Barboza all earned wins in their matches. Then on Sunday, the women were again at Avalon Athletic Club of Boardman, where they took a 5-2 defeat against Eastern Michigan. In their loss, why she was led by Tufel and Esteo as they were able to earn victories in their matches. The Penguins will return to action on Sunday when they travel to California to take on UC Riverside. The softball team will be coming off a short break and returning to action this weekend as they compete at the, <clears throat> in the Memphis, Tennessee tournament in Tennessee. Tomorrow, the Gwens will face the Belmont Bruins at 5.30 p.m. And on Saturday, they battle Western Carolina at 9 a.m., followed by Indiana State. YSU will finish the tournament on Sunday against Butler at 1.15 p.m. On Tuesday, the team will play doubleheader against the Memphis Tigers starting at 2 p.m. The Gwens will finish their six-day road trip in Mississippi as they play Ole Miss on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We wish the softball team the best of luck as they return on the road. The baseball team had a 2-1 to -one series win over, Ath over Abilene Christian School over the weekend. The Gwens lost the first game 5-2. Jeff Whaler stopped a no-hitter with a two-run home run in the ninth inning. In the second game, Colin Clark led the team to victory, pitching his first complete game, winning 4-2. He would eventually be awarded Pitcher of the Week in the Horizon League, along with Philip Glasser, who was named Batter of the Week. Clark threw 98 pitches and 72 worst strikes. He had no walks, allowed only five hits, and struck out a career-high nine batters. Glasser had a home run, three RBIs, nine runs scored, and a 500 base percentage in the series win. The Gwens dominated in-game, three topping off the series with a 9-0 win over the Wildcats. Colin Floyd went, led four pitchers to only allow two hits in the combined shutout. Glasser, Dominic Bucco, Locus Nassanti, and all combined for 10 hits. Glasser was 4-5 for five with two RBIs. Both Bucco and Nassanti had three hits. The Gwens improved to an overall record of 4-5. to five. Yesterday, they played in Pittsburgh. Go to YSUSports.com to find out more. Tomorrow, they head to North Carolina to face off NC Central in a three-game series. First pitch is set to start at 6 p.m. And now it's time for Penguin Play of the Week. We'll send it off to Katie, who has more. Thanks, guys. This week, we are honoring senior Jalea Elliott of the women's track and field team for two plays of the week. Let's take a look. Here we see Elliott winning her third consecutive 60-meter dash, making her the fourth sprinter in Horizon League history to be a three-time champion in this event. 
Next, we see her dominating in the 200 meters as she finishes with a time of 23.66 seconds, winning her second straight 200 meter. Elliott's run would make this YSU's 10th straight year winning the 200. Back to you guys. And that does it for us at Penguin Rundown. I'm Abigail Cloutier. And I'm Abbas Braswell. And we'll see you next week, Penguin Nation.